Hello. I hope you're all doing great today. Today I'll explain to you how our paperless validation software Go5 works. First, let's understand what validation is. Validation is documented evidence that ensures a system, equipment, and or processes works as designed, meeting regulatory requirements, and without providing a risk to patients' health and or to product quality. Do you work in a life sciences company, using a paper-based validation approach or a text editor? If you do, that's all right, but have you ever thought that there may be a more efficient way? I'll show you how much simpler it is to validate and keep validation documents up to date. Because sometimes this can be the elephant in the room, right? This new approach is much more than just managing generic models, which we call templates, or a set of PDF or Word files. It's like a versatile recipe, one in which can change ingredients according to one's needs. Although versatile, a recipe requires quality ingredients, precise quantities, and a careful method of preparation. This can be compared to our libraries which have been built upon the experience of over 1,000 validation projects. Our libraries can speed up validation studies by consulting, requirement scenarios, risks to patients' health and or product quality, and consolidated tests from various validations and qualification studies, which are already done for you but are still fully editable according to your needs. It's nothing more than a piece of cake. <laughs> Excuse me, just a little joke. In addition, for projects such as industrial automation, one can create a test and replicate it for all sensors and alarms with a few clicks, increasing the efficiency of the entire project. Finally, if one wants to edit and customize the libraries for other similar validations, one just needs to create or adapt content and make it available to their team. Go5 combines a validation database, knowledge management and technology that can make validations six times faster. It's almost magic. Focus on what truly matters. A paperless process. Automatic filling of blank fields. Automatic formatting and tracking of all changes. It's an off-the-shelf system ready to use. Fast and free deployment. Validation from day one. The number of user registrations is unlimited. You only pay for simultaneous access licenses. Freedom and flexibility of access control configuration. The ability for the software provider to segregate their client's data at no additional cost. Agile validations in compliance with the FDA, EMA and WHO have freedom with your deliveries. Possibility to release projects in stages, for example, system, modules and processes, use what is already tested and validated before completing the whole project. Monthly payments already include 24-7 support with training sessions, testing and production environment. In addition, the monthly license includes a package with the Go5 system validation documentation, which is updated with every new version. Keep compliance simple and consistent. Go5 aims to standardize the validation process as much as possible. However, if you have any special requirements or need any specific integration, or additionally need customized function, our team is available to assist and assess the situation together with you. So, it's time to celebrate! Are you interested in what we can do together? If so, please contact our experts at contact at 5validation.com. Hello, I hope everyone is well. It's a pleasure to have you here. I want to express my gratitude for your valuable time invested in attending this webinar. I'd like to extend a heartfelt thank you to more than 100 subscribers and a lot of them who joined us for this session. We represent 16 different countries. Thank you. Let me introduce myself. I'm Silvia Martins. I'm an electrical engineer specialized in industrial automation with two decades of experience in the field. I have been actively engaged in validation for a considerable amount of time. I currently serve as a CEO in a co-founder of Fine Validation. The Fine Validation team has had the privilege of serving over 200 clients, primarily offering services in computer system validation, IT in the OT infrastructure qualification, production equipment, qualification, utilities qualification, 
and the data integrity projects. In addition to our consultancy services, Five Validation has developed a cutting edge software as a service, SaaS, Go5, that is a solution tailored for life science companies. The solution aligns with the compliance standards set forth by EMA and the FDA. Our platform empowers organizations to conduct validation studies up to six times faster compared to traditional manual process, whether they are electronic or paper-based. What mainly distinguishes our SaaS platform is a pre-built library of validation protocols within the software database. This feature enables our users to harness ready-made validations, enhance their process and achieving efficient gains, including process and cleaning validations. From day one, our, our agile approach to validation compliance empowers our client's team. I would like to welcome Lilian Ribeiro, who is responsible for being our moderator. Thank you, Lilian, for accepting my invitation and being here. May I ask you to present yourself? Yeah, sure. Thank you, everyone. I'm Lilian Ribeiro, uh, holding degrees in biomedical system, chemical engineering. Uh, within five validation, I take on the position of sales coordinator as a partner, and I have more than 10 years of technical and business experience in the food industry and in the health and pharmaceutical sectors. Today, I'll support Silvia with some questions. Please feel free to send your questions in the QA session, in the chat, and I'll be here to support this webinar. Thank you, Silvia. Thank you, Lynn. Okay, great. So... I'd like to discuss the network opportunities available in this virtual event. Network is crucial at events, isn't it? However, many online events or webinars often lack interaction, not just with the speaker, but also with the fellow attendees. This is our first time in testing this model. So we are trying a unique approach in this webinar. Here's how it is going to work. Upon free registration, you chose whether or not to share your LinkedIn ID. ID with the other participants. Sharing was entirely optional, so we respected your decision. For those who opted to share their ID, we sent the list of attendees to you yesterday. For those who did not authorize the sharing, rest assured, we respect your choice. During the webinar, our moderator Lillian will enable microphones, chat, and QA sections. This means you can send a message to entire, the entire audience or to us at Five Validation. Enjoy the benefits of an online event with network opportunities, knowing who is attending. And uh, you can ask questions during the presentation or at the end. If you want to ask a question during the presentation or make a, com a comment, please raise your hand and decide on your interest. If there are many discussions we plan, to finish the webinar on one time, but if you don't have enough time to cover everything we plan in our presentation, we commit to record a video to complete the presentation so no content is missed. Please note that the session is being recorded and uh, will be made available in our website, fivevalidation.com, under the blog and the webinar sections, where previous sessions are also available for you to watch. The today's presentation will be sent to everyone here, so there is no need for you to take screenshots. Just stay here with me. Now, let's proceed with the presentation. Lilia, just to confirm, can you see my, my screen, my presentation? Yes, yes, I can see. And we have a one uh, hand raised right now. Okay, great. Marcelo, yeah. Marcel, nice to, to have you here. Uh, How are you nice doing to today? Uh, all right, Silvia. I think it was a mistake. No question at this Okay, time. great, great. Go forward, but, please. but please feel free. Feel free to, to raise your hand at the time you, you want. Thank you so much for you being here. Okay, great. So let me go here. Yeah. Information technology infrastructure qualification is commonly found in regulated industries, particularly in life sciences sectors such as pharmaceuticals, biotechnology, and medical device. Its primary purpose is to guarantee 
the dependentability, security, and adherence to compliance standard of information technology systems and infrastructure deployed in production, development, manufacturing, testing, and distribution. The process entails a series of activities and the documentation to substantiate that IT infrastructure aligns with the defined regulatory prerequisites and the quality benchmarks. The following outlines the key aspects of IT infrastructure qualification. Cybersecurity. It's a critical consideration as processes and the data transition into digital realm, where the risk of cybercrime escalates. Consequently, it is imperative to integrate a cybersecurity strategy into the digital value chain. IT infrastructure qualification plays an important role in documenting the measures and the risk mitigations related to cybersecurity. Regulatory compliance. IT infrastructure qualification is essential to comply with regulatory guidelines, such as those set forth by FDA, Food and Drug Administration in the United States, or the EMA, European Medicines Agency in Europe. These regulations require companies to ensure that their IT systems do not compromise the safety, efficacy, or quality of products. Risk assessment. The qualification process involves assessing the mitigation risks associated with the IT infrastructure. This includes identifying potential vulnerabilities, data security risks, and systems failures that could impact product quality or patient safety. Change control. It's expected that companies have a robust change control process in place to manage any modifications or upgrades to the IT infrastructure. Changes should be documented and the assessed for impact on qualification status, include whether they are relevant GXP, impact on any system that impacts the final product. The term GXP comes from good practices. User access control. Ensuring that only authorized personnel have access to critical systems and the data is crucial. IT infrastructure qualification includes measures to control user access, monitor activities, and maintain that integrity. That integrity. Data generated and stored by IT systems should be accurate, complete, and secure. Qualification ensures that integrity by implementing controls and safeguards against data corruption or improper manipulation. Periodic review. IT infrastructure qualification is not a non time process. It requires periodic review or requalification to ensure that the infrastructure remains in compliance with involved regulations and the industry standards. Audits and inspections. Regulatory agencies may conduct audits and inspections to verify IT infrastructure qualification in compliance with the relevant regulations. Proper qualification documentation is essential to demonstrate compliance during such reviews. Training and documentation. Personnel involved in managing and operating IT systems should uh, receive adequate training and their activities should be well documented to ensure accountability. Overall, IT infrastructure qualification is a critical component of ensuring the integrity security, and the compliance of information technology systems in regulated industries. It plays a vital role in maintaining product quality, patient or consumer safety, and the regulatory adherence throughout the final product life cycle. So what is OT infrastructure qualification? And uh, also known as operational technology infrastructure qualification for the life science industry. It's a process like IT infrastructure qualification, but focuses on the systems and the components used in your operation technology, OT environment. OT typically includes um, industrial control systems, ICS, supervisory control and the data acquisition, SCADA systems, 
programmable logical, uh, logic controllers, PLCs, and the other hardware and software components that control and monitor industrial processing in various industries, such as manufacturing and utilities. Here are key aspects and considerations of OT infrastructure qualification. Regulatory compliance. In industries where safety, reliability, and compliance are critical, such as utilities and manufacturing, OT infrastructure qualification is essential to meet re regulatory requirements and standards. Compliance with industry-specific regulation is necessary to ensure the safe and the reliable operation of industrial processes. Risk assessment. Like IT infrastructure qualification, OT infrastructure qualification involves assessing and mitigating risks associated with the OT environment. Identify potential vulnerabilities, security risks, and system failures is crucial to maintain the safety and integrity of industrial processes. Change control. Effective change control processes are essential for managing modifications, upgrades, and patches to OT infrastructure. Security measures. OT infrastructure qualification includes security measures to protect industrial control systems from cyber threats. Redundancy and failover. Qualification may involve in testing, re testing redundancy and the failover mechanisms in OT infrastructure to ensure that critical industrial processes continue to operate even in the event of hardware or software failures. Compliance with the industry standards. Different um, industries may have specific standards and guidelines for OT infrastructure qualification. These standards, such as those published by organizations like ESA, International Society of Automation, provide the best practices for ensuring the reliability and safety of industrial processes. Overall, OT infrastructure qualification is vital for uh, industry that rely on industrial control systems to maintain the safe and efficient operation for, uh, of critical processes. It helps ensure compliance, safety, and reliability in OT environment, reducing the risk of disruptions and incidents that could impact production and safety. So medical facilities are increasingly vulnerable to cyber attacks with malicious actors targeting IT systems uh, with the ransom or ransomware. Unlike other network devices, medical equipment traditionally lacks robust security measures, making it easier target for hackers seeking access to entire server sets. Breaching such equipment not only allows hackers to compromise or disrupt other devices, but also creates avenues for potential uh, breaches uh, of data patient, patient data. The validated status of GXP applications, which are critical for patient safety, product quality, or data integrity, relies heavily on the underlying IT infrastructure. Failure to maintain these infrastructures uh, in a controlled and compliant state can compromise the integrity of these applications. To ensure compliance and mitigate risks, a planned qualification process involves specification and verification based on an industry best practices for IT is essential. IT and the OT infrastructures are often referred to as commodities because they have become standardized and widely available research that are essential for the operations of modern business and industrial process. Here are a few reasons why IT and the OT infrastructure can be considered commodities for the life science industry. Qualifying infrastructure is a preventive measures against potential fines, product recalls, and the legal complications. Additionally, it plays an important role in ensuring a company compliance with standards such as ISO 27001, Information Security Management, and SOX, Sarbani Oxley Act, further fortifying its operation in the regulatory poster. 
cost reduction. Qualified infrastructure can yield operational efficiency, minimize downtime, and decrease in maintenance expenses, culminating in a long-term cost savings. Moreover, when a standardized infrastructure is utilized across multiple systems, tasks remain efficient, eliminating the need for redundant installation qualification tests for each system requiring validation within the same IT or OT infrastructure. Competitive advantage. Companies with a reputation for a high quality products and compliance are more likely to gain a competitive edge and attract customers, partners, and investors. CSV or computer system validation consists of a series of documents that ensure that software, equipment, utilities, or spreadsheets comply with the process aiming to ensure patient or consum consumer safety, product quality, and the data integrity. In simpler terms, it provides that uh, proves that the system, the final GXP application, operates according to its intended use, consistently and with quality. A final GXP application depends on good infrastructure to work properly. It means uh, that everything starts with uh, an infrastructure framework that can serve several GXP systems at the same time. If the infrastructure that supports multiple systems is not qualified, each time a specific final application needs validation, the related infrastructure should be checked for the next application without referring to infrastructure qualification. Some tests will need to be repeated during the installation qualification phase. Just to remind you of one detail, the second edition of the main validation and qualification guide, GAM5, clarifies that the name IQ, installation qualification, OQ, operation qualification, EPQ, performance qualification, are no longer mandatory, the name, not the activity, yes and it can be replaced by the name such as configuration test, functional test, and the requirement test, respectively. So ISO 13485 is a globally recognized set of standard quality management system, QMS, requirements applicable to companies engaged in the design, production, and installation of medical devices. Uh, is infrastructure qualification requirement of I, ISO 13485 in 2016? Indeed, that's correct. Section 6.3 introduces a requirement for in infrastructure documentation for both hardware and software, including supporting services. The goal is to maintain control over the work environment and uh, it's important to note that the term infrastructure here encompasses not only IT and the OT infrastructure, but also building equipment and more. However, over time, there is an increasing likelihood of software controlling each step of the product lifecycle. Particularly for item uh, 7, 5.1b, under control of production and service provision, focusing on sub-item B, qualification of infrastructure. In a sense, this requirement emphasizes the necessity for production and the services provision to be planned, executed, monitored, and controlled to ensure adherence to a specification. This entails various production controls, including, but not limited to, the qualification of infrastructure. It is important to remember that highly regulated industries, such as medical devices, require a high level of traceability. While most companies manage this using some level of technology, it remains crucial to ensure that the IT infrastructure can cover all the data collected throughout the product lifecycle. The IMDRF facilitates international multilateral cooperation to converge 
Regulatory Concern in Medical Devices and Software as a Medical Device, SAMD. The goal is to promote adaptable uh, strategies for addressing emerging challenges while we ensure the production and enhancement of uh, public health and safety. Its membership includes competent authorities from diverse countries committed to collaborating on regulatory harmonization efforts. IMDRF has several technical working groups that issue guides. One of them is related to the subject of the, our blog that is based for our webinar, Application of Quality Management System issued on um, 2nd October 2015. This guide links to requirements of ISO 13485 in force at the same time with the SAMD cycle of process and activities. In 198.3, it's highlighted that having appropriately qualified automation tools and support infrastructure is crucial for effectively managing configuration and ensuring traceability of other lifecycle activities. This underscores the advantage that infrastructure qualification can provide us. When considering patient safety and clinical environment factors, as emphasized in various SAMD lifecycle processes and activities, it's essential to, to account for people, technology, infrastructure, and the potential new hazards arising the from implementation and the usage. The qualification process for IT infrastructure can effectively address these considerations. In this slide, we outline various components involved in the qualification process. The key areas of focus for IT in the OT infrastructure qualification are change control management, configuration management, security management, server management, network management, incident and problem management, help desk, also known as service desk in, in ITU, backup, restore and archive, disaster recovery, performance monitoring, supplier management quality assurance, aspects of services management, incident and problem management, backup, restore and archive, and the performance monitoring, are critical in the qualification process. Here we outlined the typical documentation required throughout the life cycle of IT and OT infrastructure qualification. Key documents listed, qualification plan, URS, user requirement specification, functional risk assessment, configuration documentation, SOPs, standard operating procedures, installation qualification protocol, script and report, operation qualification protocol, script and report, final qualification report. Again, remember that the conventional IQOQ terms can be replaced for configuration tests and or functional tests, for example. The main difficulties faced during the IT uh, infrastructure qualification process and uh, here we listed the key challenges um, listed. For example, it's expensive. The process incurs uh, significant cost, time consuming. It requires substantial investment of time. And uh, for example, I don't know how to do it. Lack of knowledge of or, or expertise in the qualification process. How to keep it qualified? Difficult in maintaining and qualifying the start status over time. The particular difficulties these companies face regarding IT and the OT infrastructure qualification. So, for example, the same level of compliance as large, well structured companies. The smaller companies must uh, show and must uh, meet the same stringent compliance standards as larger organizations. High cost for small companies can be a business no-go. The financial burden can be prohibitive, prohibitive for smaller firms. 
qualification of orders are the attacks that can put a small company at risk. Proper qualification can help mitigate your cybersecurity risks. Research, lack of qualified personnel. Smaller companies often struggle with a shortage of skilled staff. Lack of availability of documents for audit. Difficult, difficulty in accessing or accessing necessary documentation for audits to have everything ready for audits. Team development, technical skills. Challenging develop uh, the technical skills of the team. Problem solving and decision making issues with effective problem solving the decision making process. Efforts to adapt layouts and the documentation configuration and indexing test evidence. The time and the effort required to adjust uh, document layout configuration index and test evidence. Um, project management, the overall challenge of managing product effectively. We would like to take this opportunity to present Go5 validation platform to address the challenges faced by small and medium medical devices companies in IT and the OT infrastructure qualification. The Go5 key points or benefit that I would like to describe here are used by over 90 companies, 90. Uh, the platform is widely adopted and trusted by numerous uh, companies. Not expensive, free deployment, free training. Cost-effective solution with free deployment and the training provided with no extra cost, supported 24-7. Infrastructure qualification library and the other validations according to EMA and FDA suggestions of mitigations included inside the database ready for you to use. Comprehensive library and the qualify, qualifications and validations aligned with EMA and the FDA standards, including mitigation suggestion. Agile method, easier to keep qualification status. Utilizes agile method, make it easier uh, to maintain qualification status. Audit management is easy. You can find the details in a few clicks. Simplifies audit management with ease access to necessary details. There is no need to format documents or attach evidence. It's automatic. It automates document format and the evidence attachment, saving time and the effort. I also want to inform you that Five Validation has two main business areas, the Go5 software and the validation services provision. Clients can use the Go5 software to conduct validation with their own team. If you don't have skilled staff, we provide professional services to hand the validations for you. Some clients opt for a combination of the software and a package of mentoring hours. This way, they can ensure that uh, their team is properly guided and confident in carrying out the validations independently. So if you are interested in checking our infrastructure qualification library or audit other topics, or uh, please feel free, feel free to reach out to us at contact at fivevalidation.com. We can, we can schedule a free no commitment meeting to discuss further. Um, before uh, concluding the, the content we've assembled, I before I open the floor for Lillian to tell us if she has any comments or questions from our attendees, I'd like to comment that um, from uh, yesterday, we received an interesting question that came in the registration for this webinar. We have already answered here, but I, I think the question is interesting and it might be a question of other attendees as well. The question was CSA-based infrastructure qualification guideline available. So uh, she also asked, can we exclude the qualification of hardware, software, switch, router, etc." So, well, there is no guide issued by CSA on infrastructure qualification that we are aware of. A good reference is in the field is ISP, International Society of Pharmaceutical Engineering. 
I know that there are several medical devices companies here, but their guidelines are absolutely applicable. In, in the end of the day, what matters is that we need to focus on patients, right? There is a specific guide for IT infrastructure qualification. Lilian, uh, may I ask you to include the link of this guideline here in the chat? It, it needs to be acquired, but it's worth it. Yeah, sure. I'll send it here. Thank you. The companies, hardware, software, switch, remote, are covered in the, in the guide. And the, uh, they can be crucial for qualification. The qualification strategy should be based on risk. The verification of these companies depends on the GXP impact and the result of the risk assessment. Therefore, when determine the scope of qualification, the qualification plan will outline the project scope, including all companies supporting the infrastructure. So it's not about if I should include them or not. It's about the importance each company has for GXP systems. Lillian, uh, may I ask you to tell us if you have any comments or questions from our attendees? Yes, uh, we have here one from Bruna Barros. Uh, how can we keep IoT infrastructure qualified? Yeah, I just me? mentioned that, but I didn't um, mention how to do it, right? Using the Agile method simplifies the process significantly. Uh, consider the following scenario. Typically, a set of tests is compiled compiled in a single document, all sharing the same version, right? When a change occurs, some of these tests needs to be modified. Often, a separate test script is created and attached to the change control. So this new script differs from the original test script, which remains valid, valid for the other tests that is still applicable. Now, let me illustrate how Go5 operates as an example. Each requirement, risk scenario, and test has its own version control. When a test needs to be changed, only that specific test is updated. After the change, generate a PDF report, we include both unchanged tests and the updated ones, along with the CM, change management number for full traceability. The document also includes the electronic signature with the corresponding dates, making the process much more straightforward. Okay. Uh, we have some more questions here. We have one from Carolina Spanti. Uh, do I need to open a change management for routine components such as server memory, computer, new Ethernet point, when they are uh, when they are the same, like for like. It's so time consuming. Yes, it is, Carol. In this situation, it's beneficial for the company to establish a workflow, a workflow with a decision tree. So is this part of the user, any user or GXP computerized system uh, infrastructure? Um, if so, initiate a change management a CM process as the IT might refer in the system validation IQ and it may be need to be updated there. Additionally, consider modifying the periodic review procedure to include IT change tickets, not just CCM issued by QA. The key is to be prepared to explain to the auditor why a, ser a serial number listed in one IQ has changed in another. You need to trace it quickly. I hope I answered it. Thank you, Silvia. We okay. have here one for uh, from Bon. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm saying correctly your name. Uh, is your system for ISO uh, uh, 13, uh, uh, 13,485, uh, uh, ISO 27, 
2001 or both, can you provide the information on the range of the costs? And uh, he or she added the, the one for software as a medical device uh, regarding our system, if it's applicable or not. Oh, great, great, great. Thank you so much for being here and uh, ask question. Yeah, uh, goal five, you can attend part of the ISO 13485 and ISO 27001. Why it's part? Because what we do internally is uh, listing the requirement of the standards in the deliverable URS inside within Go5. And we can um, create a specifications on how your infrastructure works or how your process work to answer this specific requirement. And you can create tests, actually verification steps, for you to prove that all requirements of these standards are uh, met. So it's a very effective way to conduct an assessment of these um, standards for you to prove to the auditor everything will be all right. What Go5 doesn't uh, do or is not going to help you a lot in this process. In the QMS, I mean, it doesn't going to manage your procedures or manage your CAPAs or non conformities It's not the, the best solution for that. And uh, also in terms of cybersecurity by itself, it's another tool. So, um, I would say that Go5 is very useful for you to manage the compliance, the compliance part, but not 100% of all the deployments that this compliance process is going to, to go further in detail. Thank you so much. In terms of price, it depends on how many um, concurrent users are you going to have. So uh, we are going to be in contact with you to uh, get some more details and sure we can provide uh, prices and everything you need to um, you need to 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 have uh, all the information for you to make the right decision. Right. Thank you so much. Uh -huh. And Bon added uh, uh, interesting comment here. You can comment on that. We went through ISO 27001 uh, all by ourselves without paying consulting services. The secret sauce is to take advantage on the cybersecurity audit management framework of AWS with cloud infrastructure. Great. It is great. And I need to share with you that we are under this process as well, so we can have a meeting to to exchange experiences. And uh, we are also prepare ourselves to be audited very soon this year yet. And the, the two ISOs, 90,000 and 27,000. And I'd like to share with you that we made this the same. So it's our company is not so big. So we, um, as we specialize in compliance, so we have the way as we have Go5, it, it made our lives very easier. So we did exactly what I, I said to you. We listed all the requirements in Go5 and we proved one by one um, assessing the risks involved in our process to choose all the mitigation rules, uh, all the mitigation measures. And uh, it was quite interesting um, because I'm happy with the, all the mitigations because now I can sleep much better because I know our company is taking care about the data. No client data can have any chance to be shared improperly. So it's much better. And I agree with you uh, for a small in the medium, mainly for small company startups, there is no uh, need sometimes to pay for a consulting uh, company to say to you what we need to do. Because we know our process. We know what is risky or not. We just needed to develop a process for us to think about all the steps. 
that's what the library in in our uh, software can help a lot because sometimes you don't have an idea just reading the standard it's quite difficult for you to say oh I'm going to do this, 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 and everything is right. It's not this way. We need to, to show everything to the auditor and in a very well-structured way, how we are assessing the, the, the standard points and also how we are going to meet them. So, and keep them. I think this is the most important because after the certification, our trained, the human trained is say, okay, now I'm certified. I don't need to be worried about it. And it's not true. We need to keep it. We need to keep the effort and the energy in a high level. So it's quite a, a challenge, but we are here to have uh, no commitment. Uh, me to meet you just for us to exchange ideas. And I'm pretty sure we are going to change a lot with you too. Thank you for being here. Okay. Thank you. Silvia, I think your screen is frozen. Uh, I, can, I can hear you, but I can't see you. Uh, well, we have one more question here. So I will read it uh, from Vinicius Milani. Considering my organization, which doesn't have uh, IT infrastructure qualified, what recommendations do, uh, do we have for this case? May I establish a gap evaluation of the involved aspects? Yes, it is a very good way for us to have a, a, a good compliance rule, you know, because um, compliance is something that if it is so heavy, you are going to lose to uh, lose some time. If it is so soft in audit, you are going to, to face no conformity. So the gap assessment and uh, uh, functional risk assessment that it is going to be in a more detailed way, it's a uh, key for you to, to proceed with that, definitely. Thank you for your question, super interesting. Yes. I, I, I apologize for my camera. I don't know why it happened. I'm so sorry. No problem. We have one more here uh, from Mohammed Hassan. Uh, is there a difference between documents required for standalone systems and documents for systems that are connected together, such as HPLC standalone software and HPLC that are connected with Lean software? Oh, it's a, it's a great question. Okay, great. And when we talk about standard systems, uh, we still have uh, um, several docu documents, but I would say that we don't need to produce a very specific um, function and specification or code review or software uh, configuration documents a lot because all the functionalities are already expressed in the supplier user guides. So that's why we don't spend a lot of time with that. But of course, we invest time on writing a, a good URS, assessing the functional uh, parts and uh, we raise uh, risk scenarios for us to check what is risky or not for what for our uh, process, the system is adhering to, and uh, of course we decide what kind of test we are going to proceed in uh, QA or test environment, in production environment, and everything. And when we have interfaces, we already consider it is uh, at least uh, category four because interfaces are quite specific for processes because each company will interface one tool with another tool. In this matter, we can produce a, a functional specification to detail it better. And it's quite interesting for us to sustain the system because the two years after the implementation, we can have, you know, an employee's rotation, we can lose someone. And uh, you, you have it in a um, documented way, it's pretty important for you to sustain the system 
and to proceed with periodic reviews and uh, to assess um, change management as well. So it's crucial. It's it's a good measure for you to to write in summary, write a requirement, assessing the the functionalities, and to proceed with tests and document, and to do the same with uh, interface, and also with uh, customizations. It is the same approach. I I hope I answered the question. Thank you, Silvia. Uh, we have here one from João Gomes. For companies that didn't start the infrastructure qualification, what would be the first step to start qualifying the infrastructure? Okay, great. Thank you, João. The first step is producing a URS. A URS, it's a user requirement specification. And uh, for, for infrastructure qualification, I would say that it is important uh, for you to think in the servers, um, all the, the, the important components, but the most important part is focusing on GXP applications. So what kind of infrastructure G GXP applications uh, are classified? So this is a good starting point. Don't think about all the infrastructure, whatever thing. Try to focus on GXP. Just to remember, GXP classification is based on uh, patient health, quality product, and uh, that integrity. If you have a good in inventory with a good cl classification, it's a good starting point for you to check the common infrastructure between the GXP applications. I would start with this and I would um, state the infrastructure necessary to support gold GXP applications, the most important ones, for you to think what is the most important to build a gold URS. Thank you, Silvia. Uh, nope. Bon added a comment here. Uh, to qualify my comment before, the speaker is absolutely, absolutely right. After the certification, a company is required for annual surveillance and re-audit every three years in the case of ISO. And the company should also conduct annual internal audit and strongly recommend pen test, even if it's not required for demonstrating commitment to information security in the case of, of ISO, 27,000 months. Great. Great. Your participation is totally great. Thank you so much. Yes, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Great. And I don't have anything to comment. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Uh, we have one here for uh, from Gregory Magalhães. Is there any method or step-by-step -step procedure to keep Windows folders and file paths where critical raw data are restored by Windows file security, user folder security, to avoid data deletion, uh, deletion without affecting data creation? Oh, Gregory, thank you for your question. Yes, uh, this part of Windows and folders are part of infrastructure qualification because sometimes the GXP application posts or save important files or data inside these folders. So we know so, uh, administrators have some freedom to block some folders to be deleted, or but sometimes we have the other side uh, users can be blocked to do something. So it's hard to uh, find a good balance, I would say. That's why the function risk assessment is so important because we need to focus and block the users to do things uh, that is really important, not just because, okay, from, the, from now on, we are going to block any, uh, everyone to delete the, the folder, it, it, it doesn't work this way. It's not a good uh, infrastructure qualification, I would say. So that's why it is important to, to say, okay, 
what kind of folders we can delete. Uh, we don't delete from CDS, from ERP, from uh, super, supervisory control, SCADA, so um, product data, traceability, something like that. But there is no only GXP applications under our infrastructure. We need to give them freedom to work. So that's why it is good to start with the GXP applications. Try to focus on what it truly matters for you to apply measures only what matters. Otherwise, you are going to make all the users' <laughs> life is very difficult. And sometimes they don't have any relationship with quality. For example, finance. We can leave them free to do what they think it's important for them, unless you are using if you structure qualification to be in compliance with SOX. In this approach, it will be different for finance as well. I'm just giving a, an example now. I mean, just in, I mean, not uh, here telling that just if, uh, you can leave finance to do whatever they want, but it's just to say that you don't need to make the, their life is difficult uh, because you have in QC lab a very important system there to protect the data, you know. So that's that is, is why I would say the functional risk assessment, you, you invest a lot of efforts to do it, but you can um, apply measures control in a good measure, in a good level. That's why thinking in function risk assessment, it's a good thing. Have this, having the same bar for everyone is not going to work. It's my, my opinion, okay? Thank you so much for your question, Gregory. Okay, thank you, Silvia. Uh, I'm afraid we can answer just one more question. So I selected here one from Mohammed. Uh, can I consider standalone HPLC software GAMP5 category four? What the difference between CDS and standalone HPLC? Mm, okay, it's a great question. And actually I'd like to finish this webinar with a great discussion here because it depends. So a CDS with the very standard functionalities, in my opinion, in our opinion from five validation, we would uh, classify as category three. However, sometimes we use a CDS system to include, for example, custom reports or custom calculations and to to eliminate some spreadsheets that are not desired for us to have there because the companies usually have a high cost to keep this kind of system and CDS, uh, the current ones are very good and they can embrace uh, almost 100% of the spreadsheets, the Excel spreadsheets calculations that you routine demand. So if we are going to embrace this kind of calculation or we are going to have some interface from CDS with limbs, for example, we definitely need to, to classify it as category four. So it really depends. If you are using very, very standard functionalities, it is, in our opinion, it's going to, to be classified as category three. Why I'm saying that is our opinion, because I actually, I should say, according to mentioned in the guideline X, it, is, it needs to be classified as X category, okay? I'm saying that because in GAN5, it was already in the first edition, and now we have the second edition is the same. We have uh, mentioned that CDS would be, should be classified as category four. So if you open the guide, the GAMP5 guideline, uh, we should respect this guidance. But 
if we, we go in terms of uh, their own risk and uh, um, the approach to be standard or not, dependent situation CDS can be classified as category three. I, I don't want to make it uh, very confusion. I don't know if you am clear, but depends on the application to be standard or not. In summary, it's, it's that. Thank you, Silvia. Uh, I would highlight some comments here. Uh, it's just, it's not, uh, they are not questions, but just for, uh, for you to know, Luciano, Luciano said, I'm proud to see you as a great Brazilian expert generally, uh, generously sharing your knowledge, Silvia. Thank you so uh, much. Thank uh, you. Thank you. Uh, we have one here uh, from, from uh, Vinicius Milani. Thank you for sharing your experience. Silvana said, thanks, Silvia, for best presentation. Oh, thank you so much. You are very cute. Thank you. Thank we don't have clients, we have friends. Thank you so much. Oh, and it's nice. I'm very happy. Thank you. Mohamed said, thank you very much as well. Oh, thank you, Mohamed. Thank you so much. And again, I apologize for my camera. It's been a wonderful experience to be here with you. I appreciate each and every one of being here, dedicating your time and giving us your attention. I'd like to extend a special thank you to my coworker, Lilian, for her valuable contribution. Thank you. I also want to express my gratitude to our dedicated colleagues, Amanda Nogueira, Rafael Antonelli, João Gomes, Gabriel Lara, Gabriel Lara, and Nathan Gomes. Your support has been important in making this event a success. Thank you again to everyone. And I look forward to our next contact. Bye. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Hello. I hope you're all doing great today. Today, I'll explain to you how our paperless validation software Go5 works. First, let's understand what validation is. Validation is documented evidence that ensures a system, equipment, and or processes works as designed, meeting regulatory requirements, and without providing a risk to patients' health and or to product quality. Do you work in a life sciences company, using a paper-based validation approach or a text editor? If you do, that's all right, but have you ever thought that there may be a more efficient way? I'll show you how much simpler it is to validate and keep validation documents up to date. Because sometimes this can be the elephant in the room, right? This new approach is much more than just managing generic models, which we call templates, or a set of PDF or Word files. It's like a versatile recipe, one in which can change ingredients according to one's needs. Although versatile, a recipe requires quality ingredients, precise quantities, and a careful method of preparation. This can be compared to our libraries which have been built upon the experience of over 1,000 validation projects. Our libraries can speed up validation studies by consulting, requirement scenarios, risks to patients' health and or product quality, and consolidated tests from various validations and qualification studies, which are already done for you but are still fully editable according to your needs. It's nothing more than a piece of cake. <laughs> Excuse me, just a little joke. In addition, for projects such as industrial automation, one can create a test and replicate it for all sensors and alarms with a few clicks, increasing the efficiency of the entire project. Finally, if one wants to edit and customize the libraries for other similar validations, one just needs to create or adapt content and make it available to their team. Go5 combines a validation database, knowledge management and technology that can make validations six times faster. It's almost magic. Focus on what truly matters. A paperless process. Automatic filling of blank fields. Automatic formatting and tracking of all changes. It's an off-the-shelf system ready to use. Fast and free deployment. Validation from day one. The number of user registrations is unlimited. You only pay for simultaneous access licenses. Freedom and flexibility of access control configuration. The ability for the software provider to segregate their client's data at no additional cost. 
agile validations in compliance with the FDA, EMA, and WHO, have freedom with your deliveries. Possibility to release projects in stages, for example, system, modules, and processes, use what is already tested and validated before completing the whole project. Monthly payments already include 24-7 support with training sessions, testing, and production environment. In addition, the monthly license includes a package with the Go5 system validation documentation, which is updated with every new version. Keep compliance simple and consistent. Go5 aims to standardize the validation process as much as possible. However, if you have any special requirements or need any specific integration, or additionally need customized function, our team is available to assist and assess the situation together with you. So, it's time to celebrate! Are you interested in what we can do together? If so, please contact our experts at contact at 5validation.com.